Today we're going to take a close look at what could probably be described as the world's cutest coffee maker, the Melita Aroma Boy. According to Melita, the Aroma Boy has actually been around since 1979, but I never encountered it until last year when it randomly appeared in my feed. On one hand, I can kind of understand why it's not so common. It's so small, it almost seems kind of like a useless toy. But then on the other hand, it almost seems like a rite of passage among coffee YouTubers to review ludicrous equipment. And then at the same time, if you're gonna add a coffee maker to your collection, you might as well get one that doesn't take up a lot of space. Let's have a quick tour of the specs. You have an on off button here, no frills, no programmability, just on and off. It is a backlit button, but it doesn't do anything besides turning the device on or off. We have a cute little basket here. It takes the one cup filters. I believe in Melita language, they are called the hundreds. And uh, this is not really a common filter size. So you probably won't be able to find it in your local supermarket. We have this cord here. It's pretty short, but it does fold up underneath the bottom. And then we also have a tiny little carafe here. It is actually possible to get a replacement if an accident happens somehow. The Aroma Boy is available in three different colors. You have a black one, a white one, and then this two-toned uh, retro beige here, which I believe is the only right choice if you're gonna go down the Aroma Boy route. Depending on how you measure it, the capacity is either one big cup or two pretty small ones. So uh, you can fit 330 mils of water and then the coffee grounds are going to hang on to some of that water. So uh, probably you're going to have a cup that is around 280, 290 mils. So I think in most places around the world that would be considered one large cup since it's not quite enough for two small ones. Since we're pretending to take this coffee maker seriously, let's brew a batch and compare it to this one here. I think it sets a pretty good standard to compare it to the Mocha Master. After all, it is one of the most popular coffee makers around. It is a little bit of a David and Goliath match, but if the Aroma Boy can hold its own here, I think it can do it anywhere. So I'm going to use this one here. It's kind of a light to medium roast, and then we'll see which one comes out on top. Okay, let's go. Okay, now both of the coffee makers are done brewing. It took around the same time even though the mocha master had about doubled the serving size. So I used 40 grams of coffee for this one here and 20 grams for the Aroma Boy. Okay, now let's do a blind test and see which one of these coffee makers come out on top. I'm just gonna mark this one here. A for Aroma Boy. I'm gonna pour off to the line here. And now let's just spin these two cups until I can remember which one is which. I'll put them up here, then I'm going to turn around and... Okay, now let's try and taste and see if there's a clear weather. Nice, pretty even extraction, um, good balance, body aftertaste, pretty okay this one. This one here is not as uh, balanced uh, and full-bodied as uh, the one over there. It's a little bit thinner and the acidity is a bit more pronounced uh, as well. Um, in some ways it has some more interesting attributes than uh, this cup over here. But then in other ways it's a bit more uh, yeah, astringent I would say. So actually, to give a little bit of advantage to the Aroma Boy, I used the Abaca filters, whereas I used a more standard kind of uh, cone-shaped filter for the uh, Mocha Master. Uh, these Abaca filters here are a little bit more high-end. They provide a more smooth finish and don't taste as much. So maybe that could be an explanation. Um, let me taste a little bit more. Okay, as they cool down, I have to say, I uh, prefer this cup here. It's got a bit more of a chocolate thing going on. It's a bit more full-bodied, well-extracted. Whereas this one here is a bit more astringent. So this one here is my favorite. Let's see what it is. Okay, no mark here. That means that it is the Mocha Master. Uh, so then I guess this one here is the Aroma Boy. So a little bit unlucky. 
the Arona boy is not really able to compete in the highest level when it's up against the Mocker Master. At first, I was a little bit unsure. Maybe the paper filter would give an advantage to the Aroma Boy, but it seems like the overall better brewing capabilities of the Mocker Master just came out in this test. The last couple of days, I have been running a couple of temperature tests to see which temperature the two brewers uh, operate at. And in those, it's just been a very consistent pattern that the Mocker Master just gets up to temperature a lot quicker and brews consistently at a higher temperature compared to the Aroma Boy. So I can just put some of the data here on the screen now, and then you can see that the Mocker Master is brewing around 90 degrees uh, for most of the brew cycle. And then after it finishes, you can see the temperature drops down, whereas the Aroma Boy takes quite a while to get up. It's brewing a lot of the time around 85 degrees, and then it's only towards the end that it will kind of get above 90 degrees, and uh, then it will actually finish at a pretty high temperature. But from what we've seen here in this wine tasting session, those lower temperatures don't do that well when it comes to extracting lighter roasted coffee. So for that reason, I would probably recommend the Mocha Master if uh, that's your preference. When you inspect the brew basket, the result also makes sense. Uh, if you look at the Mocha Master, it just looks a lot more even. You can see uh, all the grounds have been uh, saturated evenly, uh, whereas the Aroma Boy, it just looks a little bit more like a hole that has been dug in the middle. So in order to get the best results, I would probably uh, recommend stirring the basket a few times. Just a little bit of a shake when the basket is full with uh, brew water would probably do the job and help to saturate everything a bit more. I should also say that actually my Mocker Master has the most recent arm. So for many years, the Mocker Masters also had a brew arm that would kind of uh, only disperse the water uh, very narrowly in the middle of the basket. But uh, a few years ago, they came out with an updated version that was a bit better at uh, spreading the streams evenly. And it seems that uh, it also does a better job here in this test. So the result for today is that the Aroma Boy, even though it looks very cool, it's got the retro factor going on, it's probably not the best choice if you really care about extracting your coffee. I would probably also argue if you have this device here, it might as well be just as easy to pull out an AeroPress, a Clipper Dribber, a Hario Switch, something like that. And then you can make the same amount of coffee uh, probably a lot better with uh, less effort. However, there might be some cases where it's not ideal to have an electric kettle and a scale, all that whole modern coffee thing going on. Maybe you're just in your cubicle and you want to brew a coffee without your colleagues looking at you like you're some weirdo. And in that case, maybe the Aroma Boy has some uh, justification. Or maybe you live in one of those new tiny homes. You got a super little tiny coffee brew station. You got your bribe over there. And then the Aroma Boy would just fit in perfectly and look really cool on Instagram, that could be another scenario where this one would make sense. So, have you tried the Aroma Boy? And do you think it lives up to the title of being the world's cutest coffee maker? I'd love to hear from you down in the comment section. Oh, and by the way, if you're interested in a technique that can take the AeroPress and turn it from a one cup coffee maker into a bigger batch coffee maker, then uh, click right here, and uh, then I'll see you over in that video.